الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having gathered us here once again and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. Ameen. Life is a journey from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. We spoke about how the realization of this is tawbah and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is returning to him. But ultimately, we all are returning to Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt Every soul shall taste death. Death is the point at which we turn back, we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, people or men will stand with shovels and move earth. They will dig the ground. And that empty space that will be left, that void that will be there, is where we shall be placed and where we are going. This is the beginning of our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a different form. The form in which we will last forever. We will be in that state forever and ever in the sense that nobody shall have life after, nobody shall have a death after that death. So death is the point at which we change from this world into the next. Our soul ex escapes our lips and goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will ultimately be gathered in front of that maker who created us to answer for the deeds that we did in this world, how we lived our life, whether we kept away from that which he wanted us to keep away from and did that which he wanted us to do. That is why it's important for us to discuss this moment here and now because right now we still have an opportunity to turn back to him so long as we're breathing, so long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life. Let us not be like Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, who basically reached this point of death and he then turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sees the unseen, he sees that the reality of the afterlife is that I'm going to meet my maker. And this is the point that he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this juncture, it's too late because the unseen has become the seen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is it now that you're turning, O Fir'aun? And you disobeyed before and you were from those who caused much corruption on earth. You see, he was rejected at this point. We don't want to be rejected. We want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst he is pleased with that which, he, that, that which we did in this world. There was a man from the time, from the previous times, before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, kana fi man kana qablakum. There was a man from the people before you. Asrafa ala nafsihi. He had been extravagant with himself. He was extreme with himself in the sins. He transgressed the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Falamma hadaratu al-wafa. So when death had come to him, he gathered his children around him and he said that when I die, then incinerate me. Then pound me into a fine dust and scatter me into the winds. 
فوالله لئن قدر علي ربي ليعذبني عذابا ما عذبه احد so والله if allah is to take me to task he will punish me in a manner that he has not punished anyone before فلما مات فعل به ذلك so when he died this was done to him فقال او فقال الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the earth, Ijma'i ma fiki minhu, gather that which is in you of this man. Imagine, he was pounded into a fine dust, he was incinerated, he was scattered into the winds. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally just commands the earth, gather that which is in you of this man. The earth gathers that which is in it of this man and there he is standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's standing before his maker. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى مَا صَنَعْتَ What is it that made you do that which you did? So he says, خَشْيَتُكَ يَا رَبِّي I was really scared of you, O oh Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. Ultimately, we are all going back to our maker, one maker, that maker who created, fashioned us, created us and fashioned us. He made us. So it is best for us to turn to him right now, right here, whilst we have the opportunity. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ There is nobody that is born into this world except that they are born upon pure nature, the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says in another hadith مَنْ كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ the one whose last speech is La ilaha illallah, he will enter into Jannah. Now, for a person to die upon that pure nature that he was born upon, he's got to ensure that he performs his obligations and duties and lives his life according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So if we cut out all the noise, and we look at our lives, we've got to only look at what we do to understand whether we will be dying with the shahada on our lips or not. Whether we will be dying with the acknowledgement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our lips or not. If we live our lives very contrary to that which Allah wants us to do, then we will die in that state. We hear of people asking for their mobile phones, for their music, remembering a singer's name when they are dying. But where are they going? We all know that they're going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we live our lives remembering Allah, thinking of Him, mentioning Him, seeking forgiveness from Him when we slip up, then we will ultimately return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this state. You see, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Indeed, actions are judged by their endings. But in order for your ending to be perfect, in order for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be perfect, your life should have been in the process of perfection because none of us will be perfect none of us will be like the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we die we can't reach his level but we can try and if we try and we are on that road and on that path then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that he knows that and he will grant us the right ending dua is a big help when it comes to death. Most of us don't even think of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good death, or perhaps we do, but we don't really think of what we're asking for. We're asking for our exit 
from our entire life to be a good one and our meeting with our Lord to be a good one, a perfect meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What gives me hope is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he mentions a man who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's committed so many sins and he's done so many wrong things. He meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this position where he has come to him as a sinner. فَيُلْقِ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ كَنَفَهُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers him, he covers him. وَيُقَرِّبُهُ And he brings him closer and asks him, did you commit this sin and did you commit that sin? And he says, yes, I have my maker, I have. I can't deny, I can't lie, I've committed all of these sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ سَتَرْتُهَا لَكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهَا أَنَا أَغْفِرُهَا لَكَ الْيَوْمِ I protected you and I covered your, your sins from others in the dunya. So here I am forgiving you today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our meeting with him beautiful and may he enrich us with good deeds and actions. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.